Hello everyone, thank you for attending my presentation. I am Wen Chi Yang. I do deep learning applications for my work and I do artificial life for my patient. Uh, here, on behalf of my two co authors, uh, two respectful educators in Taiwan, I am happy to introduce our first attempt to adopt agent based modeling on an educational topic. We try to find the essence of the impacts of social comparisons in the classroom and see what would be a good reward structure that looks equal and fair to everyone. The background of our research topic is that usually we reward a student for enhancing his or her engagement label. That can be a prize, a good mark, price in public or just verbal encouragement and recognition. However, rewarding a student not only uh, an event between the teacher and the student, it is also an event between the student and his classmates. There are social comparisons. And hence, if, if we reward students carelessly, the feeling of unfairness will arise among students and the overall engagement level in the classroom can lower down. The impact of social comparisons has long been investigated and in concluded as the equity theory or equity theories. It indicates individuals evaluate their returns by comparing the ratio of rewards to their performance. If one sees himself in an unfair situation, there are some typical responses. If it happens occasionally, one may forgive it and request an adjustment of the rewarding scheme. If it becomes a usual case, one will seek opportunities to leave this environment. In most situations, one may feel frustrated and angry and reduce his or her engagement as a response. Besides, another typical response is to change his reference. It somewhat helps an individual get rid of his frustration for, for the injustice. Unfortunately, an obvious limitation in educational studies is that we cannot test whatever rewarding schemes with students. In practice, we can only try things that should be good for all students. However, a comprehensive experiment is always important for us to understand a particular factor. Therefore, our research question is whether we can build up artificial classrooms to examine the utility of any rewarding schemes on the students' social comparisons. It is clear that agent-based modeling has its pros and cons. The advantage is that a comprehensive analysis becomes possible and hence the essence of social comparison and equity issues can be better illustrated. On the other hand, we acknowledge that a model, no matter it is a mathematical model or a computational model, does always simplify the real situation so the findings of a model cannot predict everything. Whatsoever, uh, let's focus on our model design. We introduced some popular and well-accepted knowledge in education to dis design the model. The first one is the multi-attribute phenomenon. In our model, we set three attributes to compose a student's ability. And each attribute has an engagement level from zero to one. The evaluation of a student's performance is the inner product of the ability and engagement vectors. Besides, we introduced the above, average, the above average effect. That means most students, uh, most people think they belong to the better health in their environments. It is because people usually judge their values based on their advantages. In our model, we let agents make comparisons based on their best performed attributes. Also, we introduced the equity theory that we have explained already. Then we simulated the adaptive dynamic in classrooms and got the equilibrium quickly. Here is the environmental setting. We designed each classroom by 36 students on 6 times 6 seats, and we wrapped 
uh, wrapped around their explicit for conversational uh, convenience. A specific rewarding scheme repeats, and each student adjusts his engagement level through the comparison with his neighbors. We trivially created uh, countless artificial classrooms until the results uh, have been revealed precisely. Now let's enter the experimental part. In our first experiment, we tested the ability-based rewarding schemes. For each, each student I, he receives a reward that is his ability to the power of a parameter k. The, the denominator is just a normalization and is, is not important. The parameter k decides the rewarding type. When k is equal to zero, uh, that means all students get equal rewards. When k is equal to one, the reward is proportional to the ability. When k is greater than one, that is elitism at different degrees. In addition, we added a new model that randomly distributed the rewards. Here we display the distributions of student engagement and performance under the four rewarding styles. We can focus on the red curve and the blue curve. The red curve denotes high ability students. They are the primary human resources for an institution, a country, and even for human beings. The blue curve denotes low ability students. That is about the social justice and welfare issue in education. Definitely, a randomly rewarding students is the worst case. And the other three practices show a trade-off between utility and welfare in education. Equal rewards depress the engagement level of high ability students. Elitism is effective but gives up low ability students. An ability-oriented rewarding scheme seems a good choice in every aspect. However, there is an issue. Actually, when we talk about the evaluation of student ability, we usually talk about the evaluation of his performance, even if that is the score of an IQ test. Did you know there are Crime scores for IQ tests. So, in the second part of the experiment, we re 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 uh, sorry, we replace the original ability-based scheme by the performance-based scheme, and you can find the interplay becomes more complex. The performance decides the rewards. The rewards decides the engagement level and the engagement level decides the performance. Here we scan all the care values from 0 to 3 and plot the mean values of students' engagement and performance. It is surprising that when we evaluate and reward students based on their performance, the dynamic is much sensitive to parameter k than what based on their abilities. Once it looks a little bit like equal rewarding, high ability students are frustrated. In contrast, uh, once it is a little bit elitism, low ability students give up. There is only an extremely narrow range at k equal to 1 that seems to be a good choice. However, if we look closer to the distribution at k equal to 1, we can observe a welfare issue that a small proportion of students of any ability group seriously fall behind others. Note that these student agents are identical in our model. Just being unlucky is enough to make them frustrated and lose their engagement in, in their studies. Although we know the reason that some students totally withdraw their studies is complicated and various, we think this simulation output may reveal some valuable information. Lastly, we propose a teaching structure to optimize rewarding utility and avoid the left behind of students. It is the so-called homogeneous within class grouping.
That means we organize students into small groups, and each, each group contains students of similar performance. In this situation, the interaction, collaboration, and social comparison with, will focus on their group members. Uh, this teaching structure has already been one of the most popular practices for several benefits. Here we show it also helps to ease, to ease the negative impact of social comparison. The simulation shows that homogeneous grouping has a limited positive effect on low ability students. They are still sensitive to the elitism. However, it helps the high ability students considerably. Compared with the original situation, the high ability students are much encouraged and perform much well even if the rewarding schemes is equal rewards. Moreover, from the right hand, right hand side panels, we can see the falling behind effect has been much improved through homogeneous grouping. As a conclusion of this research topic, we would suggest a good structure is grouping students by their performance at the same time rewarding students equally. At last, we want to share some discussions we had with other educational experts, and you can find more details, including the crit criticisms in our paper. First of all, mo most experts agree with the inferences from our findings. However, many of them thought the model is oversimplified without the consideration of individual difference. As I mentioned, from the modeling aspect, a model is to capture some essence rather than capture everything. In addition, from another new point, online courses have been developing now and there can be hundreds of students in a popular online course. In this situation, designing a reward stru uh, structure based on each student's personality is impossible, and it is rather suitable to adapt simulations for an overall estimation. We will keep improving our approach and see how to integrate the computational simulation into educational usage. Lastly, uh, thank you very much for your listening, and we welcome uh, further communications with you.